Hi everyone, it's Ren here. It's good to see you guys. I hope you're well today. Today we're going to be continuing down somewhat of a philosophical path by looking at introverted intuition, dominant function of INTJs and INFJs, but also auxiliary function of ENTJs and ENFJs, tertiary function of ISFPs and ISTPs, etc., etc. In relation to the senses and particularly the sense of sight. And before I unpack my arguments, which I hope will be of interest to you, let me just remind you that I have written this book there, The Ecstatic Soul and the INFJ Type, most in-depth in investigation of the INFJ you'll find. If you have a good understanding of the basics of the INFJ personality and you'd like to deepen it to get a sense of what the INFJ consciousness is like, a deep in-depth investigation analysis, this is the book to get. Available down below, add all the links to the Amazon websites in the description box, ebook, paperback format. If you have any question, you ask me. So what is this question relating to NI to the sense of sight? <clears throat> um, I think that, to be completely honest with you, I'm thinking of possibly my next book, uh, now, at the moment, I'm still exploring all the possibilities opened up by the ecstatic soul. Um, I'm doing this, first of all, by talking about the contents of the book in this video format. In some sense, my current videos, at least a number of them every week, are a little bit like snippet lectures on the book. And again, the best way to completely understand what I'm talking about and to contextualize everything is, is to actually get the book. Um, but, you know, INFJs are always thinking ahead in some way and I am working on something else at the moment. I'm working on a work of fiction, but I'm having this idea in mind that I would like to write a book in the continuation of the ecstatic soul but I'm not sure I want to write it on the INFJ type. I mean, possibly I'll end up writing a book specifically on the INFJ type, but I have done this already. And what excites me at the moment is the idea of writing a book on the history of NI, the history of introverted intuition, at least as far as the Western thought is concerned. Um, because I don't know if you, you guys know this, but uh, as it happens, I am originally a historian of ideas. I have a, a PhD in, in history, specializing in the history of ideas, sometimes called intellectual history, which is essentially looking at how certain ideas evolve over time. And so instead of looking at like the succession of historical events as part of a particular nation or empire, or looking at the evolution of political systems or dynasties, History of ideas specifically look at ideas, the idea of empire, the idea of the family, the idea of, you know, the economy. You know, it could be anything as long as it's, as it's an idea. And I think that there's great potential to look at like, introverted intuition from a historical perspective, not the history of introverted intuition as such, because introverted intuition as an idea only came into being with Carl Jung. And if you read Carl Jung's psychological types, um, you will get a good idea of preliminary insights and intuitions that eventually led him to conceive and to conceptualize uh, NI, introverted intuition. I think that's enough of a history of ideas as far as the idea of NI is concerned. But I think that the history of ideas spawned by introverted intuition to constitute an architecture from the classical age to the present age of the different ways in which NI has manifested itself and has evolved in its conceptions over time, not as merely a constellation of different NI users existing and coming up with their own stuff and their own ideas and writing books or leading lives or whatever, but also as a, as a phenomenon that has a kind of intersectional, intersubjective more globalized nature, a phenomenon that transcends mere individualities, is something that um, I feel like I might be able to do, number one, because I have a strong interest in it, 
Number two, because I think that the field is ripe for investigation. Number three, because I actually have the academic credentials for it. And number four, because I happen to have, I think, at least as far as Western thought is concerned, enough knowledge. Because I'm very familiar with the history of thought, history of philosophy in particular, from the pre-Socratics really down to the early 2000s, with movements like um, speculative realism on the continental side and and all the developments in the on the analytic side. So looking at NI in a historical context, I think would be a superbly interesting um, project. So the first thing that I would like to do is to ask you, if you're still watching this video, uh, to, if you feel like it, um, but I would be grateful, to share a comment down below and tell me, um, you know, if I were to write a book on specifically on introverted nutrition. Of course, it will contain a lot of remarks relating to INFJs and INTJs in particular, maybe some other types that use NI as well, and influence on types that don't use NI. Um, you know, if, if this is something that you would be interested in, and you know, if this is something that I decide to invest time and, and a bit of money in, whether you would be interested in purchasing it. So just to give me a rough idea, um, I, I would be grateful. Now, I just want to give you a little bit of a taste of what such a history might look like. Because the more I think about it, the more I'm beginning to believe that the history of introverted intuition, and as it has been manifested in the West, at least since the days of Plato, I keep returning to the good old Plato, father of, of, of Western philosophy in many ways, is that I think that it is a history dominated by one overarching symbolic framework. And that this framework is at the moment beginning to become a little bit unstable it's becoming more and more difficult to keep as an organic whole. I would say, you know, the process of um, instability began probably in the 1920s, 1930s, principally with the work of two philosophers, two NI dominance as it happens, um, Ludwig Wittgenstein on the analytic side and then Martin Heidegger on the on the continental side. Um, possibly you can make a point for a predecessor, at least of Heidegger, being Nietzsche himself, an NI dominant on the continental side. But let's leave those thinkers aside and all the postmodernism and the post pragmatism movements that they have been influencing since then to focus on what has been dominant despite them, so far, still dominant. But what was dominant even more so, more hegemonic before them, before Wittgenstein, Heidegger and Nietzsche. And this idea is that NI has dominated Western thought as the symbolic representation of the sense of sight. Think about this idea, because this is something that I think is quite pregnant with meaning. We know that NI is not a function that has to do with the senses, any more than SE is a function that has to do with the senses. Nevertheless, what we do know is that SE is a function that is related to, is related in the first place to uh, the gathering of information that we collect by being exposed to the world, events, experiences, perceptions. And this raw physical contact with the world, which then constitutes, allows us to constitute perception through SE and NI, in the case of us INFJs and a few other people, is made of, you know, is, is conducted through our sense perception, so through our senses, sight, hearing, sm smell, taste, touch, and so forth. So even though the cognitive functions are cognitive things, not sensual things, there's definitely a sense in which SE still is the first link in the chain of cognition uh, and therefore the closest to the apparatus of sense in some way. And so when when it is inferior, as in an INTG or an INFJ, alienation from the external world is, is much more likely to follow than it would, would, would be for a type that is not an INJ type. And an I finds itself in a situation where it has to almost act as if it's fending for itself. And my intuition, 
<laughs> you know, no pun intended, is that at some point in the history of thought, and I think it begins more or less with Plato or a little bit before him, Western thought, and I defines itself, articulates itself as a substitute a sensory function. It does this because it has to operate without SE, or at least without conscious SE, which makes it feel as if it has to kind of do things on its own and value things on its own. It has to find a way of valuing its own insights without the corroborating evidence brought up to a conscious level. It's very difficult, very alienating, very isolated, and can make you feel lonely, but you nevertheless, at least the NI dominant tends to find that he has to justify this to himself or herself in order not to go crazy. And I think that's the way in which historically NI has done this in the West is by taking over the function of sight from the bodily senses and metaphorizing them, symbolizing that as a vision and as representation. Because if you think about it, and I is always associated with having a vision. And we think of vision as many things, but if you go back to the etymological roots, that definitely has to do with seeing, viewing, long term. It's got nothing to do with hearing or touching or smelling or tasting. And I think there are many reasons why it is the sense of sight that was privileged. I think that in many ways, that is because the sense sight is the most abstract, the most likely to be abstracted by NI of the, all the five senses. And it is also the, le the least bodily, if you think about it, tasting. You know, when you think about tasting, you can taste disgusting things or very, very, you know, gross things or juicy things. And with hearing, you can hear ugly noises. Um, with smelling, I don't even need to specify or touching also. It's something very bodily, very you know, a certain, certain sense base about, about this animalistic sense of sight. It's almost like as if there's a purity about this sense. You know, like Plato says, um, getting your eyes used to the sun. The sun, you know, blinds you at first, but once you get used to it, you can see around you. And what well, was once the darkness is all clear now, and you can enlighten other people, enlightening light, bringing light over so that people can see. Everything is related back to vision, isn't it? And really the more you look into it the more we think about truth as um, um, uh, you know saying something that corresponds to reality how do you check that what you say corresponds to reality the first thing you think about is to look at it in terms of a picture it's a bit like what wittgenstein said in his first the early wittgenstein in the tractatus He's, he talked about the picture theory of uh, of the proposition of logic so every, every instance of a proper, propositional sentence would be like a picture of the world. And you'd be able to then check whether the picture fits the reality. That's how we tend to think with our Cartesian, pre-Cartesian, post-Cartesian minds all throughout the history of the West. And again, a representation, a picture, how do you assess it? Through sight. So sight is at the very core of Western thought up to the present day. Think about all the way we talk and all the metaphors about, you know, you can't see the truth, you can't see the the forest for the trees, or is it the tree for the forest? One of the, <laughs> I always confuse the, the order of this particular phrase. Everything is related to sight, and it's almost as if truth and meaning were related to sight more than to the other senses. Now, I'm not saying the other senses are better, I'm just saying, why are we so interested in sight? I think that this has to do with NI. I think there's a historical connection between how NI has come to conceive of itself and how NI has come to value itself in the face of the alienation it's confronted by, by fear or sensation. Even think of the word perception. When you think perceiving something, don't you think of sight first? Even though we have many other senses, I think that has to do in a deep way with NI. And I would like to explore this topic further. I could do this in some more videos, but also I would like to do write a book about it. I want to know what you think, so share your comments, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for sticking with me, guys. Consider dropping a comment, a like, and subscribing, and I'll talk, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.